With classical computers, we use logic gates to process data. With quantum computers, we still use gates to change the states of our qubits, but they are a little bit different to your usual logic gates. The most common single qubit gates are the X, Y, and Z gates. Let's first look at the X gate. If we have a qubit in the zero state and apply the X gate to it, it flips to the one state. Let's try a qubit that is halfway between 0 and 1. Try and see if you can figure out what the X gate is doing. Let's try a qubit in this state. As you can see, the X gate flips the qubit 180 degrees, or pi radians, around the X axis. Now let's have a look at the Y gate. Here are some examples of the Y gate transformation. As you can see, it does the same thing as the X gate, but instead it rotates the qubit state 180 degrees or pi radians around the Y axis. Lastly, we have the Z gate, which rotates the qubit 180 degrees or pi radians around the Z axis. Since these gates rotate the qubit around the specified axis by pi radians, if we apply the same gate twice, one after the other, then the qubit returns to its original position. This means that these three gates are their own inverses. We can represent these gates as matrices. Here are the matrices for these gates. For the moment, ignore the complex numbers in the Y gate matrix. We will explain this later in the next lesson, when we talk about phase. Mathematically, to apply a gate to a qubit, we can multiply the matrix that represents the gate with the column vector of the qubit. Pause the video and prove that applying the X gate to the zero state gives us the one state. In Dirac notation, if we want to apply a quantum gate, we still use the matrices, but instead of using matrix multiplication, we look at the columns of the matrix. The first column of the matrix indicates the column vector the zero state becomes after applying the gate, and the second column indicates the column vector the one state becomes. Then we can factor out both our zero and one states again to get back into Dirac notation. Also, since quantum gates are linear, if we apply an arbitrary gate, U, that gate acts on each of the superposition states individually. Let's look at an example of applying a gate in Dirac notation. If we want to apply a Y gate to this state in Dirac notation, the Y gets distributed into the state. Then the Y changes the zero state to the first column of the matrix and the one state to the second column of the matrix. Then we can factor out the i and the negative i. The column vectors once again become the 0 and 1 states, leaving us with this state. With this, pause the video and prove that applying a z gate to a qubit in the state alpha 0 plus beta 1 gives us the state alpha 0 minus beta 1. Looking at this, you may be thinking, what is the point of the Z gate? This qubit still has an alpha squared chance of being 0, and a beta squared chance of being 1. It didn't affect the probabilities. In the next lesson, we will finally bring complex numbers into quantum computing, with an introduction to phase.